in his new book, author, international speaker, entertainer. Alex Weber here, Alex Weber. Electric environment, we gotta go big. And host and competitor on American Ninja Warrior. Our friend Alex Weber, superb athlete. I like it, okay, Alex? Is international speaker, American Ninja Warrior, and author Alex Weber. You have some <laughs> amazing energy. What steps can we take to transform failure? Do you have a major fail at some point in your life? How long is this segment? <laughs> uh, American Ninja Warrior is a big, very public, in-your-face failure. This is a clip from the first obstacle I ever tried. <laughs> I spent so much time in the water. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> I've found in talking and speaking at events with thousands of people, it's not so much the fail, but it's the fear of failing. And I know what that feels like to question yourself, to have doubts, to lose confidence when we hit adversity. I deal with that all the time. Anybody else deal with confidence and fear and doubt? Fears, failures, challenges, they're not going anywhere, but neither are you. Never give up on yourself. This is your life. This is no one else's. positivity talk and I just felt that that had impacted me so much and all the other members of my community. Well, I've learned um, a lot of new things about leadership that I didn't know before and how a community can like really come together to work for something bigger than themselves. He really came and he kind of killed the show. I think everybody was really engaged. I know I was. The lasting impact. We just got done with Alex Weber. It's truly an inspiration. It was such an awesome time. Now I put this system through the ringer in one of the most intense worlds on earth. American Ninja Warrior. My journey with American Ninja Warrior started off as a host, not a competitor. I was hired by NBC to host this new all-access series. And they thought it'd be fun if I even attempted new obstacles. And I failed a lot. <laughs> Just dripping in shame. <laughs> and I was scared that I was gonna lose it all. And why? Because I wasn't good enough. Have you ever felt like you're not good enough? Maybe it's for a position. Maybe it's for a person. Maybe expectations of you have changed. Maybe your duties have changed, your responsibility. Maybe the world has changed. And we need to respond. And that's what ultimately led me to training, to showing up, to figuring out a formula for failing. To make yourself succeed. Exactly. Yep, let's go. Oh, yes. There is a moment where we get knocked down and it might just be the last time we get knocked down because enough is enough. But if we dig it, we can choose to say, you know what, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know the end results. But in this moment right now, we can choose to commit to what we can touch. If we just choose to build ourselves up just one more time, we can surprise ourselves of what we're capable of. Putting us to shame going from hosting to straight ninja. I've been sharing my story with you all, but this is not about my story. This is about your story. The story that you're creating right now. Not his story, not her story, not their story. Your story. Be stubborn with your commitment to yourself. Be stubborn with your commitment to the people that you care about. You cannot be immune to fears. You cannot be immune to challenges. You cannot be immune to failures. But you can be immune to them stopping you. And I want you to think about what that might feel like, what that might look like in your life, for your community, for everyone you touch. It's possible. And it starts right now. Life is awesome all of the time. Said no one ever. We've all hit tough times. And we're going to hit tough times again. We know moments that knock us down cause us pain, cause us to hurt. But what if from those moments of overwhelming pain, 
we could create overwhelming joy. That's what we're going to talk about, and we're going to look at sports. I love sports, which you could probably tell from my general everything. <laughs> I've played and coached at every level around the world, and I don't just love sports. I love what sports can do for people. So even if you don't like sports, I promise you this applies to everything. I noticed that after tragedies strike communities, there's this occurrence. After Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans, why did the New Orleans Saints win the Super Bowl? After Hurricane Harvey flooded through Houston, why did the Houston Astros win the World Series? And after a tragic shooting struck Las Vegas, why did the Vegas hockey team in their very first season make it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. Why? Why? And how are they doing this? How are these communities where people are holding one another out of heartbreak able to then create something where those same people are holding one another out of joy, cheering, laughing, hugging, hugging people you didn't even think you'd hug? Like Carl? Get in here, Carl, we did it. How are they doing it, and how can we use this in our lives when we hit pain? It starts right now. Right now, here, now, with all of us in this room and watching in our own willingness to accept that sometimes things go bad. Real bad. And to not block that out or keep it at a safe, sterile distance, but instead to dig into that pain, poke around, maybe even laugh at the pain, all in hopes of creating joy from it. Okay, so I gave a few examples, but where else does this occur? Maybe it's just a coincidence. So I spent some time searching out other horrible tragedies. Really uplifting day. In New York, after the World Trade Towers, the New York Yankees made it to the World Series Finals, losing only in finally Game 7. But I'm from New York. I'm always going to think they're good. It's like in the water there. It's like bagels, pizza, yanks. It's our thing. All right, well, how about our rival, Boston? After the Boston Marathon bombing, the Patriots had a strong season. I guess they're good. <laughs> But the Boston Bruins made it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, and the Boston Red Sox won the World Series. In 2011, a catastrophic tsunami and earthquake hit Japan. 15,000 deaths. They made a movie on it called The Impossible, which, no spoilers, not a rom-com. <laughs> Horrific tragedy. That same year, the Japanese women's soccer team played in the World Cup. In the last World Cup, they never advanced out of the first round. In this World Cup, they made it all the way to the semifinals where they played defending champion, host nation, and powerhouse Germans. And they won. And in the World Cup Finals, they played the top-seeded Americans, and after trailing all through regulation, were able to push to overtime and push to penalty kicks where they won. They won the World Freaking Cup. We can create joy from pain. So why is it happening in these moments when it would be easy to feel helpless, disengage, and bail? Why instead are we summoning the best of ourselves? Why are there victories from tragedies? I'm going to submit my first reason, something that every single one of these has in common. It was done for others. All of these feats were accomplished for others. After 9-11, New York Yankees legend Bernie Williams said, when we started playing again, I didn't see the sense in it. 
It seemed ridiculous to me. It only started making sense when I saw the faces of people who'd lost loved ones, people who needed this. Needing it. When others are reliant upon us, we put aside our own self-focused interests and we deliver our best because they need it. So I ask you, who needs you? Whatever your team, your relationship, your business, your family, a friendship, who's looking to you and needing your best? I know that in my own life, my best self was brought out coaching high schoolers. In fact, at that time, I was going through some rough personal struggles. I felt lost. I had trouble standing up for myself. But when 30 little dudes looked to me for some answers, I found some. And even though I had trouble standing up for myself, I had no problem standing up for 30 young men who needed that from me because I had to. For them. For them. And that's the thing. These feats were not done for others. Faceless, nameless others. They were accomplished. For them. There's a connection, a love, a bond. Which brings me to the second reason. University of Queensland in Australia did a study on bonding by exposing one group to ideal circumstances and another group to really crappy circumstances. The group that endured tougher circumstances had higher degrees of connection, loyalty, and a willingness to put the group above themselves. The study highlighted that sharing painful experiences produces bonding. We perform because of our bond, and that bond comes from shared pain. In their one day off before playing in the playoffs, the Houston Astros went and spent time with victims of the hurricane, families that lost their homes and loved ones. After then winning the World Series, Astros Carlos Carrera said, the city, our fans have been through a lot with the hurricane. They needed this. I'm just glad we could bring them joy. We can create joy from pain. All right, so how do we do this in our lives? How do we do this in not tragic times, but just life? What if we don't like sports? Find an outlet. Sports are in outlet. Find your outlet. Whether that is sports or arts or the community or your family or your career, find something to pour into. When we have something positive in our control, we are no longer helpless. We are powerful. To strengthen our bonds, we can also share in gentle, painful experiences. Like raking the lawn with our kids or opening up about fear to a friend or with the person we love, picking up a new embarrassing hobby, like salsa dancing. You're going to step on each other's feet. I have hobbit feet. I'm like a Clydesdale. And then when not so gentle pain comes barreling into our lives and knocks our world to the ground, it is critical that we know, yes, I am hurting. Yes, this is painful. And yes, I am capable of turning this bad into good. We can create joy from pain for ourselves, for those we care about, and for the world around us. Thank you.